We're turning to the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, and then also Matthew, chapter 27, if you wish to follow along for the reading this morning. Isaiah, chapter 61, and then Matthew, chapter 27. I would invite you, if you're able and willing, to stand with me for the reading of God's Word. We'll begin with Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 1, where it reads... The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And then we're moving to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27, the story of the crucifixion, beginning at verse 45. We'll conclude the reading at verse 50. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood there when they heard it that said, this man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Asking conference president uh, Jacob Martin, if he would, to ask God's blessing on the reading of his word. Thank you for your word. It's powerful. It's life changing. Gives us exhortation and help throughout the day. Uh, Brother Solomon, as he shares it just now, quicken his mind and all of us together, and help us to be obedient to your word and love you with all our hearts. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In my mind's eye, I can see them. Their eyes are wide as they stare at the flaming sword in the hand of the angel. The fiery guard is stationed resolutely in front of the entrance to what was once the perfect home. A place without a single defect. But now they are banished. They cannot ever return. And life itself has changed for the rest of time. I imagine that Eve looks to Adam and in tears says, If only there were someone. I can see them standing on a hill. Their clothes are soaking wet. Wet with water falling for the first time from the sky. Looking down on the land below, there's less and less of it to see as the minutes tick by. Torrents of raging water are ripping up houses. People and animals are scrambling for the hills. The odd boat that Noah has been building for the century suddenly shifts ever so slightly. And some of the piling holding it up snaps. And the other side lifts and the boat begins to move with the current of the river that once was Noah's yard. As the waters rise around them, they look at each other and they begin to panic and cry, if only there were someone to help us. I see the troops lined up on either side of the valley and the giant Goliath of Gath shakes the very ground with his footsteps. His voice ricochets across the valley. Is there a man? Is there someone? And for the longest time, there are whimpered replies on the other side. If only there were someone. The jar is empty. She's making the last little bit of bread they will ever eat. She looks at her son with pity. This death of starvation will be slow and merciless. They are starving. They cannot live. Their options are out. If only there were someone. You see the cries from the Old Testament rise up in chorus. If only there were someone. The brokenness of man's sinful condition necessitates an assist from an outside source. The search for a hero continues. They've been invaded. Rome has conquered. The places they love are now occupied by the biggest military in the world. If only there were someone. 
He's been blind since birth. His physical limitations have ostracized him with society. He often sits by the roadside calling out for help. If only there were someone. She has dealt with this condition for too many years to count. She has spent every dime and every dollar she has on every physician she can find. And none can help her if only there were someone. At one point in his life, he was normal. At one point, he didn't run around with no clothes, breaking everything in his path like a human wrecking ball. But today, his name is Legion, and everyone around him believes there is no force on earth strong enough to stop him if only there were someone. To her, it's just another day. The chores are calling. Duty must be done. As she treads the dusty path to the well, Her heart is as empty as the jar in her arms. She feels used, abused, lost. She's tried many things, five broken marriages, an immoral relationship at the present. Her shoulders slump as she takes the final weary steps to the well. If only there were someone. Martha and Mary have been frantic for days. Lazarus was sick, so sick that they sent for help but it didn't come. Now their frantic worries are confirmed and Lazarus breathes his last. Their anguish now is real. Their torment is in the present. Their frustration is evident. If only there were someone. The chorus of voices rising from the New Testament is loud and the need for a hero is clear. If only there were someone turning the pages of human history since the Bible has been completed. We hear the groaning of creation crying out for help. The tears of the broken, the cries of the oppressed, the agony of the sufferer all reach out to us from the halls of history and their call is always the same. If only there were someone. On one side of the battlefield, a Union soldier prepares with his company. On the other side, a Confederate soldier is making ready. And they are brothers from the same home, from the same womb. And they are prepared to fight to the death. If only there were someone. The Jewish mother huddles in fear as Nazi soldiers kick open doors and drag her neighbors from their houses into the street. She screams as her door is busted down and she and her children are dragged into that street. They are herded like cattle to a concentration camp not fit for cattle. There they suffer untold horrors and eventually face death in a gas chamber. If only there were someone... She looks up from the kitchen sink and sees the sight no military mom ever wants to see or even think of, a government car, a soldier in a crisp uniform. The doorbell rings. His hat is off. I'm sorry, he says. If only there were someone. It's 2.30 a.m. The phone shatters slumber, and the person on the other end of the line delivers the sad news that changes a family's history. It was an overdose. We found her just a few minutes ago. I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do. If only there were someone. There's hate and rage. It steams. It boils. It explodes. What was once a matter of the heart is now being demonstrated in our streets. Lines are drawn. Sides are taken. The divide grows wider. We hate each other. We can't stand the other side. We can't listen to each other. We can't respect each other. It's all or nothing. And we look around and we say, if only there were someone. You see, innate in each human being is the sense that there should be someone. A hero, a savior, a righter of wrongs, a mender of brokenness, a healer of hurts. If there were someone who would walk into the warped reality of time and declare his mission, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. If only there were someone whose character is not changed by crisis. 
If only there were someone whose worth is not wounded by the wicked. If only there were someone whose voice is not vanquished by the violent. If only there were someone whose plan is not plundered by the plague. If only there's someone whose being is not baffled by the bullies. If only there were someone whose scriptures aren't scrapped by the skeptics. If only there were someone who is whose power is not pilfered by the false prophets. If only there were someone to make the crooked straight, to make the wrong right, to heal the wounds and mend the scars, to forgive the past and cleanse the heart, to give worth to the worthless, to give hope to the hopeless, to give strength to the weak, to give power to the meek. If only there were someone who could feel what we feel If only there were someone who could heal what needs healed. If only there were someone who would know what it is to be alone. If only there were someone to ascend to the world's throne. If only there were someone, but wait now, I see. Count the crosses on that hill. Not one, not two, but three. If only there were someone on that center cross who could pay the price, bleed and die to redeem a world that's lost. If only there were someone, now what do I hear him say? My God, my God, why have you gone away? For that brief moment, time stands still. We stop and think about what we've heard on that rugged hill. The man in the middle has done no wrong, yet here he is, crucified by the throng. With stripes on his back and thorns in his head, he struggles to breathe. He's mostly dead. The weight of the world is taking his life. The penalty of guilt cuts innocence like a knife. And then in the hour of greatest despair, in humanity he wonders, is God there? With voice resolute and an intention that's clear. The voice that, if we strain just to listen, then we can hear. The voice that flung planets out into space. The hands that from dust formed the whole human race. The heart that lovingly created each man. The being that enabled each grain of sand. That same one, the word that was made flesh. As he's nearing the hour of death, he expresses the cry of humanity's song. It's the lyric they've lifted in chorus so long. If only there were someone... And friend, on this Sunday morning, I want to answer to you this morning, there is someone. He has been there. He was there for Adam and Eve. He was there for every broken part of history. He has been there from the beginning. He did not create the errors and the hate. He did not create the brokenness, the disease, the tragedy, and the pain. All of that is a result of sin, which separates us from God. That separation and the effects of sin tear our lives apart as we walk this veil of tears. But as we walk, I want you to remember this. God is there. God is good. He did not create the brokenness, amen? He did not create the pain. He did not create the chaos, the dissatisfaction, the depression. All that he created was good. It is Satan and man who has brought sin into the world. And sin has brought forth death and everything associated with it. And so Jesus, as he's hanging there on the cross in his humanity, he cries, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because in his divinity, he's accepted the pain penalty for sin and the penalty for sin is separation from God and so there on the cross he is feeling that separation he is feeling being forsaken because he has become sin for you and me and as this human race cries out for someone we often ignore the one who is the someone the one who is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. The one who has felt so alone that he feels God the Father himself has forsaken him. But we know that God has not forsaken him forever because the the penalty of sin is paid, amen. The blood forever atones and what a reunion of God the Father and God the Son in glory that day. Now that same Jesus sits at the right hand of that same Father and intercedes for you. 
He knows what you feel. And so in a world of chaos and confusion, a world of hurt and wrong, when the devil would tell you there is no one for you, you are alone, I think of the words of the songwriter who penned these words. Standing somewhere in the shadows, you'll find Jesus. He's the only one who cares and understands. Standing somewhere in the shadows, you will find him. And you'll know him by the nail prints in his hands. Friend, whether you're here this morning or watching online, if in your life you've ever said, if only there were someone, let me introduce you to Jesus. He knows what it is. He knows what it is to feel the need for someone. He knows the need of your heart this morning. The love and power of God are the biggest untapped resources in the universe. If we turn to Jesus, he's able to fix the broken condition of the human heart. He's able to provide grace for all that life brings. For those moments when you say, if only there were someone, he says, I am. I am. I am the beginning and the end, the alpha and omega, the first and the last. It's as if he's telling you, child, I am that someone. And nothing can change that. The abuses and battles of life may mangle us mentally. They may defeat us physically. They may eviscerate us emotionally, but they have not, cannot, will not strip us spiritually of the someone who is there. Romans chapter 8 and verse 38 says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friend, this morning, there is someone. I'm inviting you to stand with me with heads bowed and eyes closed. We're going to sing that chorus together. You're seeing the news, you're hearing. I've never experienced a time in my life when, maybe except for 9-11, where we're all talking about the same things. We are. We're all experiencing some of those same emotions. And often it's just we don't know what to think. And we can be a little afraid. We can be confused, what's next? But instead of looking to a political leader to be the someone, could I remind us this morning that Jesus has fought every battle. He's experienced all that there is to experience as far as the battle against Satan, and he has won. And so our confidence must be in him. And this morning, if you don't know Jesus and you've been shaken by this, I invite you to come to the altar and pray and ask Jesus to be that someone in your life. You may not have seen him through all the times, through all the battles, when you've lost loved ones, when there's, when there's been physical pain, when there's been hurt. And you say, where was he? He is there. It's just so often we leave him in the shadows. We don't make him Lord of our life. We, we push him off, we neglect him, and we try to solve our problems every other way and neglect the someone who is the answer. This morning, the Spirit of God has been in this service. The altar is open. The opportunity, the doors of opportunity are open wide for you. Let's sing it together. Standing somewhere in the shadows, you find Jesus. He's the only one who cares and understands. Standing somewhere in the shadows, you will find him. And you'll know him by the name. 
myself standing somewhere in the shadows you find Jesus for he's the only one who cares and understands standing somewhere in the shadows you will find him and you'll know him by the nail prints in his hands father in heaven we come before you this morning grateful that through the hard fought battle at calvary that there is someone to loose the prisoner to free those who are in chains, to lift up the discouraged, to comfort the grieving, to heal the brokenhearted, to be everything to us. We thank you for that and we worship Jesus Christ this morning. And my prayer today is that if there's someone who has not found the someone, I pray that you would speak to their hearts and draw them to yourself that they may know the joy and the security and the blessing and the peace that comes from knowing Jesus. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and ask all these things and all God's people said, amen. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Let's continue to mind God throughout the day. We invite you back to Sunday school, 5.30 p.m. There'll be prayer time here in the church sanctuary and then the evening service, 6.30 p.m., the commissioning service. We welcome you back. God bless. Have a great rest of the day.